Hey YouTube, today we're going to cover the entire installation process for the 60 inch Sudler Ridge indoor ceiling fan by Home Decorators Collection. If you found this video, you might be stuck in your own installation process and you're looking for some help, we're here to do just that. We're going to take you step by step from unpacking to turning the fan on. So just stick with us. If you're stuck at a certain point and you want to just fast forward, click one of the links below that will take you straight to that spot. If you like the video, please click like and subscribe, that will help other people find it as well. So as you can see here, we've already unpacked the fan. Before we get started, you want to make sure your electric's turned off. You're going to turn that off at the wall switch and at the breaker box and just make sure nobody gets hurt. If you don't feel comfortable working around electricity, please, 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 please consult with a licensed electrician. One more note is if you're replacing a light fixture in your ceiling, chances are you're going to need to replace your outlet box. If you're replacing a ceiling fan, chances are the outlet box is okay. But you want to make sure that it's metal and that it says acceptable for fan support on the inside of it. That way you know over time the outlet box isn't going to fail and your fan won't come crashing down. So now that that's out of the way, we got all the parts here. I'm just going to look in the manual and make sure that we have everything. That way we don't get stuck along the way. So first we got some blades. There's five of them. Dark English walnut on one side, walnut on the other. We have the mounting bracket. That comes pre-assembled inside the canopy and the canopy ring. You have to disassemble that in the first step to get started. You got five blade arms. You got a threaded down rod, the motor collar cover, the LED light kit. This has the finial attached to hold the bowl on. This is the fan motor. This is the light glass bowl. It's a remote control. The remote control has all the features, speed, light on and off and dimming, comfort breeze, the timer. Comfort breeze is really a cool feature. It's going to randomly alternate your ceiling fan speeds to create an organic breeze effect. Pretty neat feature that they've come out with. You're also going to have a hardware pack with all the blade attachment screws. And since this is a dual mount fan and you can hang it on a flat ceiling or an angled ceiling, if you hang it on an angled ceiling, you're going to need an extension down rod. So they've included this handy dandy wire here. This is going to easily connect to your fan and then connect to the remote receiver. It's going to give you the extra wire length that you need to use the extension down rod. If not, the wire is already trimmed and it's good to go right out of the box. So there's no wire trimming and stripping and all that nonsense it's good to go right from the get-go. So let's go. Just some tools we're going to need for this project. Maybe some wire cutters and strippers. Not necessary, but good to have on hand. A short Phillips head screwdriver. A standard Phillips head screwdriver. A standard flathead screwdriver. We like to use a voltage line tester to make sure that the wires aren't live before beginning. A roll of electrical tape. And of course a trusty ladder. The mounting bracket comes pre-assembled inside the canopy with the canopy ring attached. To remove the mounting bracket, first twist the canopy counterclockwise to remove and expose the screws at the bottom of the canopy. Then use a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen but not remove the two screws. It's important to note there is a locking post at the bottom of the mounting bracket that inserts into the hole of the canopy. The two screws will need to be loosened enough to allow for that locking post to come out of the hole in the canopy. Once the screws are loosened, simply twist to disengage the keyhole slots and remove the mounting bracket. This fan features a slide-on mounting bracket for easy installation. This demonstration is just showing how the slots of the mounting bracket align with the screws in the outlet box. Loosen the screws in the outlet box and then align the mounting bracket slots with those screws and simply slide into place and tighten. To install the slide-on mounting bracket, First, use a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen but not remove the outlet box screws. Then, route the wires from the house through the top of the mounting bracket, align the slots of the mounting bracket with the screws in the outlet box, and slide into place. Then, use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten the two screws holding the mounting bracket to the outlet box. Make sure both screws are completely tightened and the mounting bracket is securely fastened. Before routing the wires and installing the down rod, you'll first need to loosen the set screw on the motor collar. Use a flathead screwdriver to loosen but not remove this screw. This fan also features a safety clip that will lock the down rod in place should it ever loosen over time. Before routing the wires, gently pull the green ground cable from inside the ball and down rod assembly. Then feed the down rod through the canopy and then place the canopy ring onto the down rod. Make sure the black side of the canopy ring is touching the canopy. 
Then place the decorative motor collar cover onto the down rod. Next, insert the wires through the bottom of the down rod so that they exit through the ball portion of the down rod. Gently pull the wires through until the down rod meets the motor collar. Next, screw the down rod into the motor collar. Once the down rod is completely screwed in, use a flathead screwdriver to completely tighten the set screw on the motor collar. Once the set screw is tightened, slide the decorative motor collar cover down towards the fan. Before hanging the fan, remove and discard the cardboard motor stops. These are included to keep the motor from moving during shipment. Before hanging the fan, it's important to note the tab inside the mounting bracket. This tab will align with the slot on the ball portion of the ball and downrod assembly. When hanging the fan, you'll insert the ball into the mounting bracket and then rotate it until you feel the slot of the ball engage that tab in the mounting bracket. That'll help to create a wobble-free installation. To hang the fan, lift the entire assembly up towards the ceiling and insert the ball into the mounting bracket. Remember to rotate the assembly until you feel the slot of the ball engage the tab in the mounting bracket. You'll feel the fan assembly drop into place when the ball is seated properly. If you have another remote control fan in the house, it's a good idea to change the dip switch settings in the remote and the receiver. You'll need to do this prior to wiring. First, place the included AA batteries into the remote control following the diagrams inside the battery compartment. Next, use a small screwdriver or a pen to set the dip switches in the remote transmitter. This is also a good time to note the dimming control feature in the remote. If you want to disable the dimming feature of the remote, Place the switch in the O position. The factory default setting is in the D position, which allows for the dimming feature to function. Once the dip switches are set, replace the battery compartment cover on the remote transmitter. If you change the dip switch settings in the handheld remote, you'll need to match those settings in the remote receiver. To do so, pull up the rubber cover to expose the dip switches, and then using a small tool, set the dip switches to match the handheld remote. Then, push the rubber cover back on to cover the dip switches. To install the remote receiver, make sure the flat side is facing towards the ceiling and feed the end with the remote antenna through the mounting bracket so that it rests on the ball and down rod assembly. Then, connect the quick connect plug from the fan to the plug from the receiver. Begin wiring the fan by taking the green wire from the mounting bracket and the green wire from the ball and downrod assembly and twisting those two wires together. Then twist those two wires together with the bare copper house wire. This is the ground connection. Finish the connection off with the included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape to secure the connection. Next. Take the white wire from the receiver and connect that with the white wire from the house supply lines. Twist those two strands together. Secure the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Next, take the red wire from the receiver and connect that with the black or hot wire from the house supply lines. Twist those two strands together and secure the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Once those connections are made, gently tuck the wires up into the outlet box to make room for the canopy to attach to the mounting bracket. The canopy has two keyhole slots that align with the two screws on the bottom of the mounting bracket that were loosened at the beginning of the installation. To attach the canopy, align those keyhole slots with the two screws in the mounting bracket and lift the canopy up towards the ceiling and engage the two keyhole slots on the two screws in the bottom of the mounting bracket. Twist the canopy to hold it in place. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten the two screws at the bottom of the canopy. If you don't have a short screwdriver, you can easily tilt the fan assembly to make for easier screwdriver access.
To attach the canopy ring, align the slots of the canopy ring with the two screws at the base of the canopy. Slide the canopy ring up to the base of the canopy, align the screws with the slots, and then twist to lock in place. The blades are reversible, so choose the finish side that you want and face that side towards the floor. And then align the three screw holes of the blade with the three screw posts of the blade arm. And then use the blade attachment screws and a Phillips head screwdriver to secure the blade to the blade arm. Repeat this process for the four remaining blades. The blade arms have tabs on them that will align with the slots and the fan motor assembly. Insert the blade arm into the flywheel and those tabs will align with the slots to align the screw holes. Then use the blade arm attachment screws and a Phillips head screwdriver to fasten the blade arms to the fan. Repeat this process for the four remaining blades. The light kit attaches to the fan using two keyhole slots and one standard screw hole. To attach the light kit, you'll need to loosen two screws and remove and save one of the screws in the black bracket of the fan motor. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove and save one screw, and then just loosen the two other screws. Next, connect the molded adapter plug from the fan with the molded adapter plug of the light kit. Then tuck the wires in and lift the light kit towards the fan. Align the two keyhole slots of the light kit with the two screws that were loosened in the black bracket. Then use the screw that was removed and saved and with the Phillips head screwdriver, completely tighten that screw. Then completely tighten the two remaining screws. Before installing the glass bowl, you'll first need to unscrew the finial from the threaded post of the light kit. Remove the finial and then remove the hex nut on the threaded post of the light kit. Save the hex nut once removed. Position the glass bowl so that the threaded post of the light kit comes through the center hole in the glass bowl. Then use the hex nut that was removed and saved in the first step to hold the glass bowl in place. It's important that you only finger tighten the hex nut and not use any tools because over tightening this nut could cause the bowl to crack. Once the hex nut is tightened, finish the installation by screwing the finial onto the threaded post. This fan features a three speed reversible motor. The factory setting is switched left, which will push airflow down. During the cooler months, you may wish to reverse the airflow to pull warm air from the ceiling. To reverse the airflow, simply slide the switch into the opposite position. Make sure that the fan is off before attempting to set the reverse switch. This fan also features a full function remote control. To turn the fan and light off at the same time, press the power button. The fan has a memory, so next time the fan is turned on using the power button, it will return to its last settings. For example, if the fan is on medium speed with the light on when the fan is turned off, the next time it is turned on, it will return with medium speed and the light on. The fan speed button will cycle through the fan's three speeds. Press once for high speed, twice for medium speed, three times for low speed, and another time to turn it off. Press the remote light button to turn the light on. Press it again to turn it off. Press and hold to cycle through the dimming. Release the button once the desired brightness is achieved. The Comfort Breeze setting randomly alternates the fan's three speeds to create an organic wind effect. Press the button to start the Comfort Breeze mode. Press the button again to disable the feature. The Fan Timer button will automatically turn the fan off at a desired setting. 
Press once to turn the fan off in two hours, twice for four hours, and three times for eight hours. Press one more time to disable the timer. Congratulations, your ceiling fan installation is now complete. Time to sit back and relax with a nice tall beverage and enjoy your new ceiling fan. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe down below. That'll help other people find the video as well. And as we always say, keep it breezy.